Welcome to our lecture online. Here again we have an, an equation. Uh, second order. Blah, blah, blah. Let me try again. Okay. Welcome to our lecture online. Here we have another differential equation which has real repeated roots. But in this case, we're also given the initial conditions of the solution. The solution evaluated at t equals 0 is equal to 5. And the derivative of the solution at t equals 0 is equal to 3. So not only are we trying to find the general solution of this homogeneous differential equation, we're also trying to find the exact solution, the real solution, because we're also given the initial conditions. But we're still going to find the solution using that characteristic equation. So let's go ahead and give us the equation. We have r squared minus 4 times r plus 4 equals 0. I believe we can factor this. This can be factored to be r minus 2 times r minus 2 is equal to 0. When you multiply, you get plus 4. When you add, you get minus 4. So that looks good. But notice the two roots are the same. That means that r1 equals r2 equals 2. It's the same repeated root. Now the general solution can be written as y as a function of time is equal to c1 plus c2 times t times e to the root times t. And this would be the repeated root. So in this case, we would get y as a function of time is equal to c1 plus c2 times t times e to the, and the root is 2, so that would be 2 times t. Now, since we're going to find c1 and c2 using these initial conditions, it's probably better to multiply this through. So write it like this. y as a function of time is equal to c1 e to the 2t plus c2t e to the 2t. And now first we're going to use our first initial condition, the function when t is equal to 0. So y, when t is equal to 0, is going to be equal to 5, which is equal to c1 e to the 0 plus c2 times 0 times e to the 0. Of course, this portion here will go to 0, which means that 5 is equal to c1 times 1, or simply 5 is equal to c1. So c1 was easy to find. Now let's go ahead and use the second initial condition to find c2. So that means we first need to get y prime, and y prime of t is going to be equal to, so starting with our equation right here. We're going to find the first derivative of that. And that means here we have c1 e to the 2t. Take the derivative of this, we get 2 c1 e to the 2t plus c2 times. Now here we have a product. So we have the first times the derivative of the second. So times 2 e to the 2t plus the second e to the 2t times the derivative of the first, which is 1. All right, I don't think we need to do much with that to simplify. We can just leave it as is. Now, well, first of all, we do know what c1 is, so we can rewrite a little bit. We can write y prime of t is equal to 2 times 5, which is 10, e to the 2t plus c2 times 2t e to the 2t, plus e to the 2t. All right, now I believe we're ready to apply our second initial condition. y prime when t is equal to 0 is equal to 3. And that is equal to 10 e to the 0 plus c2 times, when we plug in a 0 for t, we get 0 plus e to the 0. Simplifying that, we get 3 is equal to 10 times e to the 0, which is 1. That means 10 plus c2 times 0 plus 1. So that's c2 times simply 1. And then 
we can subtract 10 from both sides, so minus 7 equals C2. And there we have the value of our second constant, C2. We now plug in 5 for C1 and minus 7 for C2, and our equation then becomes y is a function of time is equal to C1, which is 5 e to the 2t, plus C2, which is a minus 7 t e to the 2t. And this now becomes our one, an exact solution to our original differential equation. And that's how it's done.